Thank you. Well, hello, Jackson Hall. It's great to be with all of you here. I want to talk with you about the power of a flashlight. Because years ago, passing through Jackson Hole, I didn't have a flashlight and I really needed one. Let me describe it. Let me set the stage here. Years ago, up here in the Tetons, I was hiking along, not a cloud in the sky, getting near the end of the day, so I pulled off the trail, pitched my tent, and made a little supper. And having some daylight left, I decided I would check out the neighborhood, which I did. And I came upon this beautiful high mountain lake. I mean, it was stunning. And I sat down and watched the sunset at the far end of the lake. Got back to go back to my tent, and I'm realizing that it's gotten dark all of a sudden, as if somebody just flipped out the light. Well, I got over to that meadow and across to where I just knew my tent's going to be, and I can't find it anywhere. And I don't have my flashlight. Finally, ended up staying sleeping or trying to under a, a pine tree with a Forest Service map that I had in my pocket. And, and uh, you know, after one of the night, uh, longest nights of my life, I get up, I look around, and there's my tent, <laughs> about 30 feet away. But being close had done me absolutely no good, and conditions had changed so fast, just like in our world today, right? One minute, we're hiking along. So what is the flashlight? Because I don't want you to get caught out there in the cold and the dark. And uh, so I want to talk with you about your flashlight tonight. And what is that flashlight? Well, it's innovation. Innovation, which is uh, probably the most misunderstood, overused word in the English language today. But all it is is simply this. Coming up with ideas and bringing them to life. Coming up with ideas and bringing them to life. And take a look around at the world today that we're living in, and you'll understand why your relationship with ideas is so critically important all of a sudden, right? The world is more overwhelming today than ever before. Those of you who are in business, business is more complex and fragile and fast-changing than ever before. Resources are scarcer today than ever before, and all of it takes new ideas. So... My guess is that you're at this TEDx conference because you love ideas. And so let's talk tonight a little bit about how you come up with ideas and how you bring ideas to life. Because suddenly on this terrestrial ball we call the planet Earth, there is a desperate need for people, especially in this room, to come up with more ideas, to invite more ideas into our lives on a daily basis to meet the challenges that this world faces. So let's talk about that because it's a critical, critical capacity. In fact, I would go so far as to say that's the big idea that I want to talk with you about tonight. Because you see, anything less than a constantly evolving set of fresh, powerful, life-changing ideas is really not going to be enough. It's not going to be adequate to keep up the world that is constantly changing. I have a rather interesting uh, take on this whole TED thing. I love spreading ideas, but really what I want to talk with you about is how you can come up with more of them. Let's take a look. I study for a living the world's most innovative companies, and I advise governments and organizations and business owners and individuals on how to work with their ideas to grow, to differentiate, to profit from change. What we did, uh, my research team and I, that would be a group of students from the uh, University of California at Santa Barbara, where I live, and uh, we went to people in organizations and we said, who do you identify as an innovator in your organization? And we went to those people and interviewed 43 of them, and we asked them, you know, what are the attributes, what are the skills that enable and allow you to get new things done for your organization. And they told us. And you know what? Not a single one of them said, um, gee, I was born with these skills. They all said they developed them through practice. And that's what I'd like to share with you, these seven I skills. Uh, this is Michelle. Now, she's a receptionist. 
at a manufacturing company in Ohio. And Michelle won the award for Innovator of the Year. And a friend of mine who was there went up to her and said, Michelle, wow, how did you come up with all these ideas? You're the receptionist, right? And she said, well, I've got a little secret method. And he said, well, what's that? And she said, well, you know, sometimes customers are calling in and they're not real happy with something that we did or maybe something that we failed to do. And she said, when that happens, I don't get defensive. I just take down the story. And then I love to ask them my favorite question. And my friend said, well, what's that? And she said, well, what do you think we should do so that this never happens again? And they tell me, and I write that down, write it up, and submit that to our new ideas program, and that's how I got the award. <laughs> <laughs> now, you see, Michelle could have easily said, hey, innovation, make it my business. You've got to be kidding. But instead, she said, innovation, yeah. I'm on the phone with our customers all day long. There's no way that I can't avoid hearing these great ideas about how ways that we can improve further. You see, Michelle understands intuitively that innovation is not what you do after you get your work done. It's how you approach that which you do. This is Brent Gow. I met him when I keynoted the American Payroll Association. And I said, you know, introduce me to your innovators. And they said, you've got to meet Brent, Payroll Person of the Year. And I'm kind of the back of my mind. I'm thinking like you probably are. Innovation, payroll, isn't that an oxymoron? But no, not with Brent. I said, Brent, what did you do? He said, well, we started just asking questions. You know, how can we reduce the cost of payroll? And we got people to voluntarily switch over to be paid electronically. And we started doing this and this and this. But it started, he said, with a question. See, Brent is innovating at the department level. And they ended up reducing the cost of doing payroll for Starbucks by 50% per capita. And he said, we're just getting started. Or how about Sue Kinnick, a nurse at the VA hospital in Topeka, Kansas? Sue and her team were tasked with reducing medical errors. And their research showed that this was a growing problem. You know, either giving the patient the wrong medicine or giving them the right medicine too many times. It was a hidden problem, but it was growing and patient people were dying. What to do? Well, the problem began to obsess Sue. And her team, and they began to think about it all the time. And when one day, Sue's on a business trip to Seattle, and she's turning in her rental car, and she notices how effortlessly the agent scans the barcode and gives her a receipt. And she says, aha, maybe we could do this with medicines and stop all of this. And by the time she got back, to Topeka, she was convinced this was the breakthrough idea that she'd been looking for. And she had no problem convincing her team that this was it. And together, they got some seed funding. They partnered with uh, vendors to build a bigger display and with uh, software people to, to write the correct software and partnering with different parts. And they rolled it out in the long-term care wing of the Topeka Hospital. And then, finally, after a year, to the entire Topeka VA, and medical errors were reduced by over 90%. What they were able to accomplish when they took it live across the uh, hospital was nothing short of a miracle. Now, I tell you this story because this is a room full of Sue Kinnicks. And what is bec becoming increasingly obvious with each passing day, ladies and gentlemen, is that the mindset of innovation, the mindset of innovation and spreading that mindset and making it job one is the only thing that's going to keep this country competitive as we enter a future of rapid change. So let's be practical. Let's talk about a couple of practical techniques because the ideas are out there, but we just got to glom onto them. Identify what gets your creative juices flowing. As simple as that might sound, where are you? What time of day is your best time? And tune into that moment. Or this one, download your ideas the minute they occur, because they're like little butterflies. They'll flutter away if you don't capture them. Or how about this one? Learn some techniques for getting unstuck, because it's an inevitable part of the creative process. So learn a couple of techniques there. 
ask different questions. That's what Brent Gow did. That's what Michelle the receptionist did. That's what Sue Kinnick did. That's what innovators everywhere do. Be alert at all times for new ideas because they're everywhere. So take out those ear bobs, earbuds and be here now, as we used to say. Be present in the moment because this is where ideas and information are happening. And like Sukinik, you don't want to miss them. And finally, keep a journal. And I wanted to end by just giving you a few stanzas or a few bars from a recent journal entry that happened to occur when I was leaving Taiwan or Thailand uh, about a year ago. It goes like this. I'm leaving Thailand after speaking yesterday to 4,000 insurance people. What surprised me was how young they all are. Maybe I'm just getting old. But they preened and flirted and talked with one another in clumps in the giant Vitek Convention Center on tea breaks. And I did something with that group that I'd never done before. It blew me away. Affirmations. I am unstoppable, I asked them to repeat. And threw me back across the stage. I am creative, they charged. Ideas flow from my mind like a mighty river. And wow, what a, what a wave. And so here I am now on this peaceful Sunday morning in the Thai Airways Lounge on my way to Bali for Motorola. And I look up at the monitor and CNN and the carnage just in from Syria. And I'm reminded of others' plight at this very moment in time. Yet today, I'm going to block it out. I want to maintain this state for just a little longer. We all deserve experiences like this, moments when you're but a vessel for the potentiality and the possibilities that reside in the human spirit. We all need moments like this, when you soar on the wings of possibility. Everybody, everybody everywhere wants to live their best life. Everybody wants to prosper. Everybody wants to feed their family. And so, we all deserve to have an experiences like this, but unfortunately they don't occur every day. And when they do, you savor them. You store them in your heart. Because every day is a date with destiny. Thank you very much.